From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello and welcome to another Ropecast. I'm here in the studio with my partner Peter Tischer, and today we're going to complete our series of book recommendations in the run-up to Christmas. Hi welcome. Roger. Hi welcome. folks out there. I think I'm going to have to more or less rely on you today, Peter, because you said you wanted to do something on comics or graphic books. Uh, yeah, well, most of them are graphic novels, but right. let's just say comics, and I, I love comic books. Let's just yeah. dive right in. Your first recommendation. The first, yeah, the first one I brought looks like a traditional superhero adventure book. It's called Watchmen. Now, our listeners may know this from the movie from 2009, but this was originally a comic book in the 1980s. And while it looks like a traditional superhero book, it really is not, because this is a story about an altered history so in this story, superheroes emerged in the 1940s and their presence in this book changed world history. So, for example, in the book, the United States won the Vietnam War <laughs> and uh, the Watergate scandal was never exposed. And in the story, which is set in the 1980s, the country is edging towards World War III. Yeah. With the Soviet Union. Oh, the Soviet Union, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was the time. And there's a group of very strange superheroes who try to come to grips with that problem and also solve a murder mystery. Oh, right. And the, the heroes are very strange. They don't have a cape. And they are yeah, very ambiguous people that all represent different looks on life. For example, there's a character called Rorschach. Mm -hmm. They're all male? Uh, there's one woman, I think. Okay. And but Rorschach, you know the ink blot tests yeah. that psychologists use. Yeah. So he wears a mask with an ink blot <laughs> that always changes according to what he thinks. Oh, right. So it's very uh, symbolistic uh, storytelling. Yeah. It looks the drawings look very traditional, but at the same time the story is completely different. It's a must read for everybody who loves superhero stories. This is an alternative superhero story. So right. Watchmen by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons. By the way, they're Brits. All oh, right. Well, thanks for that. And I have a second recommendation, which is, well, less one book, but actually a subgenre. Do you know what graphic novels are? Mm. Theoretically, but I've never actually had one in my hands. Uh -huh. Well, you should. I, uh, the listeners may hear it. I brought the book. So here are a few. And the ones I would like to recommend, that's almost become a subgenre, which are autobiographical graphic novels ah. by American artists this time. So the first one I would like to recommend is called Stitches by David Small. It's a story about a young boy who has to come to grips uh, with the fact that through an operation he uses a vocal cord and his voice. Uh -huh. And what makes this a really tough story to read, he got this um, cancer in his throat through his father, who is an x-ray doctor. I see. And in the 1950s, people were exposed to x-ray much more easily and didn't oh, yeah. take care. So yeah. the son was always in his father's practice. Yeah. And he was exposed to that. So there's a lot of talk about guilt of the parents. Yeah. At the same time, they're angry. Mm -hmm. So kind of a tough read. Yeah. Extremely good story by David Small. Believe it or not, when I was small, you went to buy shoes for children. There was an x-ray machine so you could see. I, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So that's that picks up that story. Or another example is Fun Home by Alison Bechtel, in which the protagonist deals with her coming out as a homosexual, yeah. a lesbian. Uh, one I brought here, uh, that's one I love that I've read recently, is Special Exits by Joyce Farmer. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, there are old people on the cover, which is rather <laughs> unusual. Yeah. And she tells a story about an elderly couple in their last four years and mm -hmm. how the daughter deals with her parents mm -hmm. becoming old. So, you know, they become stubborn, they can't clean the house anymore, they only eat canned food, and the daughter tries to get them to eat healthy food and all that stuff. 
So it's kind of a sad story, but it's very funny at the same time. Yeah, and in our societies, we have more and more elderly people, so it's <laughs> kind of relevant. Right, so that's a very good story to read here on that topic as well. And for those who like tender stories, I recommend the last one in that series, also an autobiographical graphic novel by Craig Thompson. It's called Blankets. It's like a comfort blanket then? In no way, although it's not a peanutsy kind of story <laughs> here. Craig Thompson also tells his adolescent life in this. And he tells the story about how he has to gr come to grips with his parents being devout Christians, and they have very strong ideas about morals and everything. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, Craig has his first love, Raina. Mm -hmm. And of course, there is a clash <laughs> between his parents' ideas and his own ideas. And it's uh, very, very tender drawings, as you can see. This oh, yes. and. I love the way he, he describes first love in this. Mm -hmm. So a very tender story. A little sad as well. That's These these autobiographical novels have that in common. They're very often about relationships, different difficult relationships with parents. So, But wonderful stories, right. all those. Are we done? No, not yet. <laughs> because I wanted to end it off with something very funny. Right. And so I brought the funnies. Oh, yeah. As you know, comic strips is a very important subgenre, the newspaper comic strips. Yeah. And I want to recommend a comic strip that is not very well known in Germany at all. I don't know if it ever has been translated. It's Doonesbury. Oh, yes. You heard that? Oh, certainly have, yes. Okay, but that. I think our German listeners won't. It's by G.B. Trudeau. Yeah. It first came out at the beginning of the 70s, and it's interesting for our students. Mm -hmm. Because it starts off as a college comic strip series. Yeah. It revolves about one character, Michael Doonesbury, who's basically your adult student version of Charlie Brown. <laughs> he's a, you know, he's, he's a sort of a loser, not a complete loser, but he doesn't know how to get a girlfriend, for example. That's one of his big problems at the beginning. And opposed to him are other characters who are completely different. Um... There's this one character called B.D., yeah. who is a college jock, as they say. So a football player, always wears a helmet, yeah. very conservative. Well, there'll be plenty of people in the UK who are familiar with this through one of the daily newspapers. Ah, okay. So this is an interesting series, but I'm only talking about the first series. Mm -hmm. Because there's one interesting thing. G.B. Trudeau took a break from the series from yeah. about 1983 to 1984. And mm -hmm. after that, the series changed. There's still a heap of characters with different personalities and everything, but now they age. Mm -hmm. So Michael Doonesbury, in the first part of the series, for 10 years, basically stayed a college student. Yeah. But he aged over time now. So he's now into his second marriage. He has kids of his own. Um, he has changed professions all the time. And the characters live through political events also. That's yeah. very interesting. So, for example, BD, you remember the character I just told you about. At one point, he loses a leg. It's still a comedy, but he <laughs> loses a leg because he went to the Iraq War in 2004. Oh, yes. So, and I think Michael Doonesbury announced that he would vote for Trump mm -hmm. uh, just recently. Yeah. So he picks up all those things. And I would like to close off with that because <laughs> it's a funny thing I found. You know how you have these little recommendations, these little quotes on the covers of books sometimes? Yeah. So in a Doonesbury book that I own called Planet Doonesbury, there is a quote from Donald Trump. Trump yeah. about this. Now, remember, this is late 90s. Right. So this, this is a quote from back then. And Donald Trump says, Trudeau is a jerk, a total loser, a pathetic moron, a third-rate talent. Coming from somebody like Mr. Trump, I think that is 
uh, recommendation all in itself. People read Doonesbury. It's a wonderful comic strip and you'll learn a lot about American culture and politics anyone, and student life. Anyone picking up that book today might think Trudeau. Isn't he Canadian Premier? <laughs> well, he isn't. It's only the name he's spelt in that, also in the French way. But no, G.B. Trudeau is an American yes. artist. Okay. Uh, Peter, I think... You wrote your dissertation on comics a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, maybe you? you could hear that. I'm extremely <laughs> enthusiastic <laughs> about comic books. Maybe that, maybe that sometime in the new year we can we can do another ropecast and talk about how you got into this. What, what you know, what attracted you to this genre? I would certainly love to do that. Good. Okay. I look forward to it. Okay. That's all today, folks. Bye bye. Merry Christmas for now. And from me too. Bye. <laughs>